What's up, YouTubers? God's on. I'm going to read 13, Acts 13. It's a long one, so I'm going to get right off into it. Because if I got some uh, commentaries to make, on, it, these videos are getting long. But so far, they've been letting me load them, so that's good. Okay. Acts 13. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simon that were called. Uh, Niger and Lucius of Cheyenne and Menan, uh, which had been brought up with Herod, uh, the Tartak, and Saul. <clears throat> As they ministered to the Lord and fasted the Holy Ghost, said, separate, said, separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work wherein through I have called them. And when they fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Silica. And from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Silomanus, they preached the word of God into the synagogues of the Jews. And they had also John to their minister. Our ministry, their minister. And when they had gone through the isles unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar Jesus. Uh, that's kind of suspicious or kind of odd. It's got uh, Jesus' name in his dude's name, Bar Jesus. Uh, Jesus. Bar Jesus. Okay, interesting. B A R G E S U S. Which was with the deputy of the county. Now, I find this, you know, again, here we are with uh, Paul and uh, his gang, and they were gravitating towards sorcerers. It seems Paul spent more time with sorcerers than probably most of them in the book, I would imagine. But for that being said, for what it's worth, which was with the deputy of the county, Sangris, Paulus, and a prudent man who called for Barbus and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elemas, a Elemas, a sorcerer, this is another damn sorcerer here. This guy's name, his name is Elmas. E L Y M A S. Uh, Elemas or something like that. The sorcerer, for so is his name in interpreted, withstood them. I guess his name is interpreted, interpreted his name is withstood them. Uh, who would them are we talking about that he was, that he withstood? I don't know. All that's interesting. Again, the whole sorcerer thing seems to be locked into these stories of Paul. Uh, it's almost like, he, to me, uh, I feel like he was in company with these sorcerers and these guys, and he's writing them into these stories as if nothing else to explain away the company of them. Neither here nor there, just food for thought from my head. Uh, going audible. Okay. To turn away the uh, deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost. And there's that ghost again. I'm not sure what ghost he's filled with, but he's filled with it most of the time in this book. Set his eyes on him and said, Oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Question mark. And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind and seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness. And he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Now I'm assuming as he's saying all this to the uh, 
the sorcerer guy. Paul's kind of like uh, uh, playing the part that he's uh, whooping up on the sorcery dude and, and getting him straight, putting him in place. Then the deputy, <coughs> when he saw uh, what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Now, when Paul, uh, if it wasn't all a show, uh, like I say, there's a lot of evidence of Paul hanging out with these sorcerers. Witches always have to need at least two to keep their show, like an old-time medicine show, going. <clears throat> you have to have some action or show that the people will see that the people believe. So, uh, it's, it's sorcerers is basically a witch. So, is, is Paul playing the part with these witches that he can gain a statue with these people and get their belief? Worth thinking about, being so I'm reading this book, uh, looking at the possibilities of what may have happened. Why so much of what Paul says causes so much confusion among the brother, so much discord among the brother? Seems like almost every biblical argument there is today is somehow started by the writings of Paul. That being said, when the deputy saw and seen being of the Lord. Okay, now when Paul and his company <coughs> loosed from Pathos, they came to Perga in Philea. And John departed from then returning to Jerusalem. But when they departed from Pegra, they came to Antioch in uh, Phizda and went into the synagogues on the Sabbath day and sat down. And after the reading of the law and of the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Yea, men and brethren, if ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand said, and I've heard that uh, not that long ago, beckoning with his hand, interesting phrase of word, beckoning with his hand and said, Men of Israel, and ye that fear God, give audience. The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt and with high and with an high arm brought he them out of it and about the time of the forty years suffered he then manners in uh, in the wilderness and when he had destroyed seven nations seven nations in the land of Canaan or canine, he divided their land. He divided their land to them by lot. And after that, he gave unto them judges about the space of 450 years. And when he had removed them, he raised up unto them David to be their king, of whom. Also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, Israel, unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. Then John had first preached unto his coming the baptism of of repentance to all the people of Israel and as John fulfilled his course he said whom think ye that I that I am I am not he but behold there cometh one after me whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to lose men and brethren children of the stock of Abraham and whose among you farth God Feareth God, to you is the word of the salvation sent. For there that dwell in Jerusalem, and their, and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, they fulfilled them in condemning him. And through and though they found no cause of death in him, 
yet desired they, Pilate, that he should be slain. And when they had fulfilled all they that was written, all that was that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulcher. Interesting word, tree, instead of cross here. Interesting. I've seen this tree a lot during this book, calling it a tree instead of a cross. I'm sure we could probably think on that long enough and come up with a reason because there are trees elsewhere that have to do with the occult. But just to uh, bring that to the attention. We call it a tree. But God raised him from the dead, and he was seen many days of them, which came up with him of Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses unto the people. And, when, and, and we declare unto you, glad tidings, how that the promise... Making a video which the promise of the fathers God hath fulfilled the same unto their children in that he hath raised up Jesus again and it is also written in the second psalm thou art my son this day have I begotten thee and as concerning that he raised him up from the dead now no more to return to corruption uh, he said on this wise I will give you the sure mercies of David who is so long it goes on and on here because uh, we're basically in a recap now Paul said this thing about the, uh, the sorcerers and whatnot and uh, this is uh, uh, to my notion what I'm picking up from this is to give what he's writing here validity he's basically recapping a lot of stories from the Old Testament to lump in with his own writings. A tactic that I see Paul doing a lot of time. Okay, wherefore he saith also unto another psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. For David said, He had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep, and was laid unto his fathers, and saw corruption. But he, whom God raised again, saw no corruption. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that though this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified from all things, uh, from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you, which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold, yea, this despisers and wonders and perish for I work a work in your days a work which ye shall in no wise believe though a man declare it unto you <clears throat> and when Jesus were gone out of the synagogue uh, and with the Jews excuse me and when the Jews were gone out unto the synagogue the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached unto them the next Sabbath. Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious uh, proselytes uh, followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaketh to them, persuaded them to continue <clears throat> the grace of God. Uh, and the next Sabbath they came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were fulfilled by envy they were filled by envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradict, uh, contradicting and blaspheming. And that's where a lot of people are going today with what Paul is saying. They're saying that Paul is contradicting and blaspheming. Does, does he write this thing because he knows that what he's going to write and what he's going to say and do is going to be contradicting and blaspheming? So we write it into what we would later consider to be the Word of God not to do that. At least we all be in big trouble. Maybe we'll all be in big trouble if we don't. Possibility. On with the reading. And Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should first been spoken to you. But seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so, for so hath the Lord condemned of saying, I have set thee to be the light of the Gentiles, 
and thou shalt be the salvation unto the ends of the world. Now, isn't that funny? Or isn't that strange? So the Lord commanded us saying, now he's talking about, uh, what's he saying about Paul in the game? I'm assuming here's what he's saying. That's what it sounds like he's saying. And this is the Lord speaking. I have set thee, Paul in the game, to be a light of the Gentiles, and thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. Ah, I thought we already had somebody to be the light to the whole world and to be that salvation uh, to the ends of the earth. I thought we already had that position filled. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord as many as were uh, ordained to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was uh, published throughout all the region. <coughs> Okay, but the Jews stirred up the devout and the honorable women and the chief men of that city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. But they shook off the dust off of their feet against them and came unto uh, Ungarum. And the disciples uh, were filled with joy in that Holy Ghost. Now, basically what I saw happen there in that writing was that Paul was given again, uh, I don't know if you could call it excuse or reason, a legal written reason, uh, to be in company of yet uh, even more sorcerers. Have you ever seen so many sorcerers come out in the, uh, uh, the writings of uh, the Twelve or the, the elect? It's almost like, man, Paul's always around these sorcerers. And then he brings this up into the writings to get it out in the open. Because so just like a politician, uh, you know, a politician will, will blow the whistle on himself so it can, he can deal with it in a controlled manner and control the situation. And I kind of feel that's what we're seeing happening here with Paul. He's bringing up the fact he's meeting up with all these sorcerers. And the next thing he does is he puts his big old long uh, lump of the old scriptures to give his scriptures validity and uh, to make it all seem very biblical-like. But basically what I see here is Paul, yet again, uh, describing that he is in the the company, uh, the accompaniment of sorcerers. So food for thought for there it is. Uh, that was longer than uh, uh, than I may be able to put this on YouTube. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this uh, YouTube down. And uh, when we come back next time, we're going to be in Acts 14, everybody. Peace out.